In this lesson, we will talk about applications and selectors. To do desktop automation, we need to understand one important topic, and that is this selectors. So a selector is simply just a container for storing all the attributes or graphical user interface elements and its parents as XML fragments. Well, that was a bit of a technical description. We'll see how it's working in simplicity. So for example, we have a um, calculator here. And we can do a click activity. So let's find a click. It will just click a button. So we'll drag this one in. And then we'll indicate where we want to click. Say that we just want to click the 9. Then we'll do this. To find the selector for this graphical element, that is the number 9 button in this application, we can click the three ribbons here and click edit the selector. And this is the selector. This is the one that we use. We can have a more complex one if we open up in UI Explorer. We can add elements to it, but we won't do it here. Here we can see that we have some applications, idea up here, the title, and then we have uh, that then it is number nine button. This one will of course change, and this one as well, when we want to click the number eight button. And as it is with these selectors, uh, some of our applications or browsers, they have changing layouts. So these selectors, they will change as well, as well as the attribute nodes. And some of them are generally unstable or volatile. And that's why we need, as RPA developers, we need to fine tune them. And we'll see how we can do this in this example. So let's stick with the calculator. And this one, of course, we can click OK here. Then we can run the flow and we'll see that we actually click number nine. So we will run the flow. Now we click number nine. So now we can click number nine. However, say that we want to take user input and then we want to click that input from the user. We will take two user inputs. We will do a, an addition and then we'll present uh, the value we get from calculating in the calculator, not in the um, actual UI path engine. And this is because the calculator, they is this great simplification of applications. So this one will look exactly like the applications that we work in and we, that we need to automate. The, this button here is the same button as it is in uh, another application, ERP system, CRM, or whatever you want to automate. Um, and this one is great for simplicity, and every one of you has this calculator. So open up your calculator, open up UiPath, and we'll cr create a flow together that will make you understand selectors and how we can create dynamic selectors, which is probably one of the most important topics of UiPath. So first, let's go up here. First, let's just reset every uh, time we started. Let's reset the calculator. And we'll do this with a click. Again, we will drag this click in. You know, we will click C here. That one will reset it. And first of all, we could take some input from the user. Let's just take one input. So what we'll do here is that we'll find uh, an input dialog here. And we will drag it in. So the title, that could be number A. The label in quotation marks, that could be put in your first number. That's the first number of the user's summarization. And because the selector, that is, it is a number in the selector, you can see that, but it's, it's a string. So we will take the input as a string. If we wanted to calculate it here, if we wanted to calculate it in the UI path engine, then we would have taken it in as an integer because the UI path engine will need integers. But the selector, that is just text, strings, so we will use text. So here in the output, press Control K and then we'll say str number A, like this. And then what we can do here, because we want it here in the click button, we want this to be dynamic. And of course we could create a switch with all 10 numbers from zero to nine, but that would just be overkill when we can do something smarter. This is an important concept, so listen closely. And if you don't understand it, just repeat it a couple of times because you need to understand this. So click edit the selector. And what we want to do here is to make it dynamic and then we can take it as an input. And sometimes it's just trial and error. And usually we could probably delete this here and this one. And what we do here is that we'll make this number nine button dynamic and this might work. We'll see. So here number nine, we will mark the nine. Then we'll right click and then we'll choose variable. We could also create a variable, but we just created one that was the int variable, the integer from up here. So choose variable, 
And then we'll simply just mark this and we'll click OK. So now you can see that we have our string variable number A put in here. So whatever the user types in, that number will go here and hopefully, <coughs> sorry, this uh, dynamic button will work. Let's try it. So we run it. Let's pick number, I don't know, three first. So we put in three here and hopefully we will do the calculation. We'll reset it and that was number three. Let's try it one more time. So we run it. Let's just pick number zero maybe. Zero. Like this. So now we have created a dynamic selector and that was fairly easy. And because we did that, we could change where we wanted to hit with this click quite easily, right? So now we can do the calculation very easy and we will repeat the steps so you will get used to it. So after having typed in the first number, then we will have a plus. We'll click the plus here, drag that in. We will indicate where we want to click. That is the plus like this. So now we click plus. Then we want the second number. So we need the input dialog from the user as well. So find the input dialog and drag it in. The title, that will just be number B. And then we will put in our second number. We will say that to the user, put in your second number, like this. We need to store the input into a variable. So control K. And again, we'll say str number B. And we can go down here in variables and see that we have created the two strings. So far, so cool. So now we click plus, then we need to click the second number. We could actually cheat a bit or we could create from scratch. If we wanted to cheat and you often want to do this because that's why we in the RPA business, right? We want to automate things. Then we can just copy it here, this activity and paste it in below. And then we can click the three ribbons. We can edit the selector. And what we just can do is that we could just change this. Oh, sorry. Big B from A to B. This will work. So, and if you have, uh, you couldn't remember how to do this, then just rewind a bit and see how we did it in the first place. So we click OK here. So now we, we did the addition. We can try it. Usually when you make these workflows, it's often nice to just run your workflow several times. So you can see that you haven't messed up. So let's just pick two plus eight. We click OK and hopefully we'll do the calculation. Two plus eight. So now we need to click the equal sign because we need to get the result. So what we do here is that we will find another click and we'll drag it in. We will click the equal sign here like this. And if we do this in the calculator, then we'll end up here. So if we want to do the, the easier thing to get the result because we want to present that to the user, then we will just send a hard key here, control A, that will mark everything. Then we'll copy it and paste it in the message box. So let's see how that is done because then we'll get used to the send hard keys as well. So we'll find two send hard keys. Send hard key. We will just drag two in while we add it. The first one that will press control A and we need to indicate where we want to press control A. So click the indicate on screen and we want to do it here, right? And now we need some selector work as well. So click the three ribbons, click edit the selector, because as you see here, this one uh, will only work when the display is 10, but we can have uh, a lot of different results from uh, yeah, 0 to, 20, uh, to 18. So we want to change this to make it dynamic. And what we do here is that we'll delete this 10 and then replace it with an asterisk. Because this selector will work as well, because now it will just work for any display else. We can validate it, click up here, and we can see that it indeed work. So now we send the hard keys, we control A, that marks everything. Then we will control C, that will copy it. We will indicate the field again here. We'll click the three ribbons, click edit the selector, and again, replace this with an asterisk. We can click validate and see that we have created a working selector. Then we want to have the results from the clipboard. And what we can do here is that we'll say get from clipboard. So this one will get the text, copy it from here, and then we can get the clipboard text. So get clipboard, get from clipboard here, drag it in. So the clipboard, well, that's already in it here from up here, and then we'll store it into a string. So we'll say control K over here, str, 
result. And now what we want to do is just to present the result. So find a message box, scroll a little bit down and drag it in. Here we'll say str result, like this. So now we have created the workflow that will take two numbers from the user and do the calculations. Let's try to run it. The first number, that's five. The second number, let's pick one. So we click uh, delete five plus one equals, and then the message box will come up, giving us the result. So mission accomplished.